I wonder if she's caught anything today. That's a funny looking animal. Good beast. His hide feels like a turtle's, but softer. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. Square jaw and broad shoulders. A real farm boy. Quite a sexy one, too. It's a small wagon pulled by one of those strange beasts. It's a flower bed. There's plenty of room for more seeds to be planted in there. That's one mother of a plant. I wonder if it's a carnivore. It looks to have been carved out of a large tree, but the texture of the house is more stone than bark. Enter, honored guest, and I would have been with you presently. It's a nicely crafted bench. Some of them look to be in English, but I know they're not. It's the Alton language Tobias told me about. The tongue of magic. Sounds a little disgusting, to be honest. Be welcome, stranger, to my abode. Stranger? Don't you remember me? You invited me here. Every moment we meet, and every moment we part. You are both stranger and friend, April Ryan. I'm sorry, but could you try to be a little less obtuse this time? I have a hard time understanding half of what you say. I will beg for your forgiveness, April Ryan. I had a hard time to make myself understood amongst other peoples. I will pull myself into this moment, difficult as it may be, so that we can communicate and so that you may understand. It is important that you understand, April Ryan, very important. Who are you? I am Abnaxus of the Venar, ambassador to the I Reed Council in Marcuria. My people live far from here, and they do rarely visit your kind, and so I am their sole link to humans and Domari. Why is that? I alone among the Venar am able to focus on a particular moment and thread in time and so to speak with those who flow with time, like you. Thanks for your hospitality, Abnaxus. Goodbye. Blessings of the balance to you, April Ryan. And may your journey have been a long and fruitful one. How do your people perceive time? It is hard to explain any moment before this moment and any moment after is the same to me as this one. I have lived already and I am yet to live. Do you understand me? I think so, but how's that possible? Everything is possible, April Ryan. There is magic and there is science and between the two, everything is possible. Can you see the future? To me, every moment is the same. There is no future. I can relate moments you have yet to see, and I can unravel possible threads. But remember, the future I see may not be the one into which you walk. Moments and threads fluctuate, change. I can remember things that have never come to pass, and I have seen things that will never be. 
So you can't tell the future? I would see your possible futures, the likely threads among hundreds. If there was not a veil in time, I would. What's this veil you keep talking about? Somewhere ahead, in our path, there is a dark veil through which I cannot pass, past which I cannot see. It is disconcerting to me to be blocked from the moments of my life. How did this veil come to be? It was, no, will be created in chaos, by chaos, to keep the future hidden. All threads converge on a single point here, beyond the veil, and this will happen only once it is written. Written? Where? In the prophecies. Tell me about the prophecies. Words have been written by seers who can discern from all possible threads the threads that are certain to be woven. These words are the prophecies. And what do the prophecies say? Prophecies speak of a time when the balance will falter, weakened by the assault of chaos and its servants. The moment the veil falls is the moment of uncertainty. The balance may stand, the balance may fall. I cannot tell which it will be, and I cannot even see the possibilities, the threads extending from each fork. But the prophecies also speak of a savior, as the prophecies usually do, one who will bring order to chaos, only to release chaos on the innocent, one who will restore the balance, only to finally break it. That doesn't sound like a savior. The word in my tongue is Kanang La. Literally translated, it means the small seed who grew to a tall tree. Can I ask you a few questions? Yes. Could you tell me a little bit about yourself, Obnaxus? Me? About myself? We, the Venar, are not good at speaking of ourselves. We always know who we are, and so we have no need to tell each other. Well, are you married? Do you have kids? Or perhaps your people don't marry? Yes, we do marry, and we always know who we are to be with, because our future is also our past. And so we also know our children, even though, according to your reckoning, they have yet to be born. My wife was, is, will be, the beautiful Abyanda. She lives by the Bay of Fire in the east. She gave birth to our three female children, Abratha, Abalexa, Abpalmana. How long has it been since you last saw them? I see them now, April Ryan. Do not forget I perceive time in a different manner from your kind. I have given them your regards. Well, uh, say hi to them for me. Why did you come here to Mercuria? I was chosen to be ambassador to Irene when I showed a talent for seeing the flow of time from one point to the next. I was trained for a long time in locking myself into a single moment to communicate and understand your world. My people do not normally involve themselves with others, but the veil has forced us to do so. Why don't the Venar want to involve themselves with humans? In the wrong hands, our knowledge is dangerous. To know of the possible fluctuating futures this can be a weapon to some who flow with time. We cannot interfere with your time. We are not allowed. Who says? The balance. The guardian. The guardian watches not only the balance between worlds, but also the balance within. Time is in balance. And if this balance is upset, the guardian would know. 
I thought the Guardian was gone. So he is. And that makes it even more crucial to my people that we preserve the balance and not upset it. Chaos is our enemy, April Ryan, and we do our part to keep it at bay, as do you. Are you planning on ever going back to your people? When we pass through the veil to the other side and time yet again opens up, I will return to my people. I look forward to that day. I miss my people, and it is hard to speak with your kind. It makes me tired. I know what you mean. I'm a stranger here, too. You will bring us through the veil, April Ryan, and then we can both leave this place and go home. Where is your home, Abnaxus? Across the border mountains and north to where the forests are evergreen, and where, in winter, the land turns white. Do you know Father Tobias? Tobias is a faithful servant of the balance, and he is a good man. He leads the Sentinel down a narrow path, but he never wavers. We are friends. So, I can trust him? Trust is a concept which often puzzles me. Amongst my people there is never distrust. We always know the truth. But amongst your people, amongst those who flow with time, trust is important, a fragile thing. But yes, yes, I do think Tobias is to be trusted fully. I cannot see beyond the veil, but up to that point there is no thread in which he betrays your trust, April Ryan. Have you heard of a man named Cortez? No, I have not. But that does not mean I do not know him. Names are often fleeting, April Ryan. He's my... well... Some have called him my mentor, others a nutcase. I'm not sure which it is. But I'm leaning towards the former. Your mentor? He is a shifter as well? No, I don't think so. He doesn't travel. Shift between Stark and Arcadia. I do not see him in my life, April Ryan. I do not know him. Beyond the veil, perhaps, but not before. Thanks, Abnaxus. You are always welcome, April Ryan. I need some help in my quest. Yes, you did. I did? And what did you answer? That I will help you as much as I can, but in the end... I'm on my own. I've heard that one before. What do you know about dragons? I do not know much about the kin, but I do know a little. Perhaps it will help you, perhaps not. The Dryak kin came to this world a very, very long time ago, before the dawn of man, before the divide. The Venar had yet to learn to be outside time, and there were few other peoples on Earth. The kin played an important part in the divide, in separating magic from science, and in the founding of the Fathers, the Sentinel, to watch over the balance. It is said that after the divide of the four Dryak kin that came to Earth, two went to Stark, and two to Arcadia. But that was a long time ago, twelve thousand of your years. I do not know what has become of them since. You don't know where I may find these dry kin? No, the white of the dry kin, the mother, has, according to legend, been sighted. The tale of the silver spear of Gorimon speaks of the mother and her child. Though I think this is but a tale, and far from the truth. The story is called The Silver Spear of Gorimon? Yes. Unfortunately, I do not have this book myself, and I do not know of anyone who does. What about the other dragon, the other Dryak kin? Of the Dryak kin, I only know of the mother, the white of the kin, although... 
I have heard tell of a god who fell from the sky into the ocean a great long time ago, but this may also be just a tale. What else do you know about this god who fell from the sky? Only what I have told you. Someone with greater knowledge of the ocean and the creatures that live beneath its surface may be able to tell you more. Have you heard of a disk that works as a key to the Guardian's realm? Yes, but very little. It has been spoken of in the I Read Council only recently, brought to attention by the Tyran Ambassador. He wished to know where it is kept. And what was the answer? No one at the Council knows or admitted to knowing, and the Ambassador was asked to speak with the Sentinel, which he is unlikely to concede to. The Tyran are allied with the vanguard, and so are in political and ideological opposition with the Sentinel. I know Vestrum Tobias. He would not speak a word with the Tyran, nor the vanguard. Not unless it was to challenge their philosophies. So you don't know where I can find the disc? No. Ask Vestrum Tobias. Do you know anything about a rift leading to the Guardian's realm? I have heard speak of such a thing. I believe it was where the tower was built and the divide created. When the earth was one, it might still be open. Any idea where it is? I am afraid the Venar were never very involved in the affairs of the Sentinel, nor took any part in the Divide except to agree to the necessity of it. We had little choice but to concede. We are a magical people. We need the balance, because we would not, could not, survive without magic. How would I go about fighting Chaos? You cannot fight Chaos. It is not so simple. To oppose Chaos, one must return order to that which has been affected by Chaos, and thus reduce its powers. But this is not something everyone can do. Only those ordained by the balance can embark on such a dangerous task and survive. That's about it for now. I am glad I could be of assistance, April Ryan. I'll talk to you later, Abnaxus. Blessings of the balance on your journey, April Ryan. Good morning, Tobias. Why, it's April, my friend from Stark. Have you come to visit us again? So it appears. I didn't exactly come here by choice this time, though. Oh? How so, if I may ask? In a weird and twisted way, it's nothing out of what's become the substitute for ordinary in my life. One second I was in my room in Newport, the next I was in a dark alley in Mercuria. You must have opened a shift while you were sleeping. Good. This means you are learning to harness your magic. Yeah, I guess, except I don't think I'll be able to get back home again. And this time, my mentor, Cortez, has no idea that I'm here. Ah, but I'm sure you will find a way to channel and control your power soon. In the meantime, is there anything I can do to help? 
I need help getting back home. Unfortunately, I'm in no better state today to help you shift than I was the day before yesterday. You are the one with the talent, and so you must learn to use that talent. I need to locate the disk that unlocks the Guardian's tower. The disk that is the key? Yes, it is needed. It might even restore balance, provided the new Guardian accompanies it to the tower, of course. But you wish to find the disk yourself? I have to. Cliché or not, it's our only hope. You uh, do this often, then? You know, save worlds? It's an expression. Heroism in my world is more of a cliché than anything else. I do not understand. But then, I am merely a servant of the balance, while you are... more. But yes, the disk. As I told you once before, when the Earth was divided, and the realm of the Guardian created, a disk was forged in the Well of Making. The disk was to serve two purposes, as a key to the Tower of Balance should it become necessary to enter it in the Guardian's absence, and as a replacement for the disk that is already in the Tower should it be broken. The Tower is now abandoned and locked, and the old disk shattered. I do think the time is right for the second disk to be brought forward and used. Where is the disk now? At first, more than 12,000 years ago, it was kept in the open, at the Sentinel Enclave outside Mercuria. However, when thieves attempted to make away with a disk, it was taken away. Why? So that the four parts of the disk could be divided amongst four of the magical people of Arcadia. People who would have nothing to gain from the balance being compromised. What people were the disk divided amongst? This I cannot tell you. I am not sure anyone remembers now. But it would be in the scriptures, I am certain. What scriptures? The scriptures of the balance. There are thirteen of them. Thirteen is a strong number, rich in tradition and... Did you know the Irede High Council consists of thirteen ministers? No, of course you don't. Thirteen was also the number of the fathers who begat the Sentinel, and who built the Tower of Balance. Where can I find the scriptures of the Balance? Pay a visit to the Sentinel Enclave, located outside the city to the east. The Great Library of the Enclave contains every book ever written by an Arcadian Minstrum, and most others as well. Speak with Minstrum Yerin, the keeper of books. Tell him I sent you. I need to find the entrance to the Guardian's realm. There is one. You are right in that, but where I would not venture to guess. In the past, when the time came for the Guardian to step down and another to take his or her place, the Guardian opened a gateway wherever it was needed. A Guardian, still in full control of the balance, can invite anyone in and let anyone out. But with the Guardian gone, the only way in would be the point where the Divide was first created, where the tower was built. Isn't that location written down somewhere? Remember that this was done on the old Earth before the Divide. After the Divide, after the creation of Stark and Arcadia, places were shifted about. This entrance may not even be on the ground anymore. What do you mean? It could be up there, in the sky, or far below us, through the crust of the earth into the molten depths below. I cannot say, and I do not know anyone who could. Isn't there any way to locate the entrance to the Guardian's realm? Perhaps with careful investigation of the old texts, histories of Arcadia, of the Divide, the scriptures, I do not know, April, but it cannot hurt to look. Again, you will find these texts at the Sentinel Enclave. Speak with Minstrom Yerin. I need to locate the two dragons that reside in Arcadia. The Drykin? What's the difference? Dragons is a word from your world. The kin are not what they have become in your legends and fairy tales. 
But they're real, aren't they? Oh, as real as you and me, April. And old. They have been here since before our time. As you probably remember, the kin were instrumental in the Divide, saving mankind from a terrible end. But I know so little. Only what I can remember from my studies when I was a minstrel at the Enclave. How can I get more information on the Drakkin? Books, daughter, books. The wisdom of the ages. There is one tome you should study, called The Secrets of the Dry Kin, by Minstrom Elniak. It is old but informative, and it captures the imagination. Where can I find this book? Again, you will find these texts at the Sentinel Enclave. Speak with Minstrom Yerin. Thank you, Tobias. Good to know I could help you, April. Didn't you deliver any maps yesterday? I wasn't around, sorry. Well, there are more maps to be delivered, and my customers are getting very impatient. Did you deliver the map to the rolling man? Yes, sir. All right, let me see his signature, and I'll give you your next delivery. Here's your next delivery, a map of the Northlands to a Tun Lyak staying at the Journeyman Inn. And be quick about it! She's been waiting since the day before yesterday. Some kind of sandstone, very malleable, but also very vulnerable to the elements. These cliffs probably have huge, naturally formed caves and tunnels. It's a circular hollow about 20 centimeters across and about 5 centimeters deep. The dragon's mouth is pointing straight down at the middle of the floor. It's a small recess about the size of my fist, with a thin duct extending from the recess to the circular hollow in the middle of the floor. There are three others just like it, arranged with equal distance to each other in a circle, and all connected via a duct to the center of the floor. It's emerald green, teeming with life and carrying the pleasant salty scent of distant shores. The dragon's mouth is pointing straight down at the middle of the floor. Excuse me? Yes? Oh, it is you. I'm looking for a guest of yours, Tun Lyak. The sailor? She is looking for work today, I'm afraid. With most of the ships moored to the docks for balance knows how long, it is difficult for sailors to find work. Do you know when Tun Lyak is expected back? I could not tell you, child, but from what I know of the ships in harbor, she will not find one that needs a navigator any time soon. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome, child.
How are you today, then? Like you care. Do you know anything about a god that fell from the sky into the sea? Of course. You find fallen gods most everywhere these days. They're an air and a hand. Really? No, of course not. There are no fallen gods in the sea. It wouldn't make much sense, would it? If the sea was full of gods just lying about the seabed. So you've never heard of such a thing happening? Now you got it. Bye. Hello again, old man. Eh? Eh? It be you. I'd love to hear some more maritime stories. Sure, sweetie, I'd be happy to. What story you be wanting to hear now? Have you heard a story about a god who fell from the sky into the sea? Aye, that I be having. Although that be a story of man-eating mermen who ravaged the sea of songs, swallowing sailors whole and spitting their bones out to dry. Are you sure you be up for hearing such a cruel tale? I've heard worse. Aye, ye be a tough little lady, be you not? All right. Well, like I be telling yous, the sea of song surrounding the island kingdom of Gien. Be a treacherous sea where countless vessels have disappeared without a trace. Now, this be near thirty long winters ago, mind. During me second term as captain of the trader, Rocky Lady. We've been crossing the sea of songs for two seasons. And we've yet to be seeing any sign of the dreaded bloodthirsty mermen who lurk in the waters off the Guyen coast. That night we be laying still with our sails down, awaiting the wind to pick up and carry us north to Mercuria, when we be hearing a frightful scream a coming from the port side of the Lady Luck. I be the first to rush over and account of me having me arm down the apple barrel. We just been to Eras to pick up 100 barrels of sweet Guyenne apples. And as luck would have it, I be there just in time to witness Sally Barney's horrible fate. Gibby in the water, screaming and waving his arms, and a water around him be red as a midwife's arms after a grueling battle. I get the picture. Go on. Then I be seeing, I glimpse, a large, shiny, sleek body be pulling Sally down and swallow him whole. It be the merman come to claim the body of the sailor who dared across their sea. Are you sure it wasn't a shark? What? Big fish with sharp teeth and dead black eyes and a large triangular fin on top? Ye mean a black-eyed snapjaw? I guess it could have been, but it be no snapjaw. It be the dreaded merman of the Sea of Songs. Where does the Sea God fit into all of this? Aye, I be coming to that. You see, the bloodthirsty merman be not only happy with cannibalizing sailors, but they be sacrificing their own to their dark old Sea God. Actually, unless the mermen are human, they wouldn't really be cannibals if they ate humans. Blood sacrifices to the dreaded god who lives on the bottom of the sea. Aye, that be the truth of the mermen, fierce and bloodthirsty cannibals of the Sea of Songs. Uh, thanks. Good story. Aye. I'm all storied out for now. Thanks. Aye, ye tell me when you want more, right? See you later. If I not be dead, I...
Hi there, Mr. Westhouse. I'm back. My word. <laughs> what on earth possessed you to return to this godforsaken place? You were lucky to escape the first time, but now you're really pushing it. It's not that bad a place, or else you wouldn't stay here. Besides, this time I didn't exactly come here by choice. I stay here because I'm a true masochist, Miss Ryan. And who forced you to come? Was it Cortez? He doesn't even know I'm here, unfortunately. No, I think I had some kind of accident with my so-called powers. I shifted in my underwear. No, ha! Huh? <laughs> Isn't that the way it is, though? We always cross the rift at the most inopportune times. <laughs> Care for a drink? Oh, no, no, that's right. You, uh, don't. <laughs> Would you mind helping me with a few questions? I have nothing better to do, so shoot. Do you know anything about dragons? I try to stay out of the affairs of the kin these days. What precisely do you wish to know about the damn beasts? There are two dragons in Arcadia, and I'm trying to locate them. Yeah, I've heard that tale myself. But no, no, I don't know anything about it. You'd be better off speaking with the Sentinel Minstrum. After all, religion is their specialty, not mine. Did you ever hear a story about a god who fell from the sky? Stories aren't my thing, April. You should visit a library. I'm sure you'll find some stories in the books. I know the Sentinel have a library somewhere near the city. I've also heard rumor of a people with wings who do nothing but observe and record history through stories. But I don't know if that's all it is. A rumor. Still, if you're looking for stories, it may be wise to check it out and see if you can find them. I'm looking for a disc that will open up the Guardian's realm. That's religion, Miss Ryan. <clears throat> and the only things I worship are whiskey, a good cigar, and a nice long... <clears throat> anyway, don't ask me about all that uh, balance mumbo-jumbo. Would you be able to tell me where I could look for the entrance to the Guardian's realm? in Tobias's pants, <laughs> if he had his wish, I'm sure. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know anything about the Guardians. Balance, or Sentinel, or gardening. <laughs> now, if you're interested in bullfighting, I could talk all night. Bullfighting's a horrible act of cruelty to animals, and not much of a sport at all. I'll just forget you said that, Miss Ryan. If there's one thing I miss about Stark, it's bullfighting. You'll be happy to hear, then, that they abolished bullfighting hundreds of years ago. Damn. I can't think of any more questions for now. Then let's talk about other things, shall we? Thanks, Mr. Westhouse. Anytime, April. Come back if you're homesick and you feel like talking to a fellow alien. Are you busy? I'm never too busy for you, April. What may I assist you with today? Thank you. Good day to you. Did you make your delivery to Tun Lyak at the Journeyman Inn yet? 
Oh, I forgot all about that. By the balance, get to it! How about a game of cups today? Okay, let's go. Just place your bet, <clears throat> investment, on the table and the game will begin. Here's my coin. Now, how do I play? I place one cup on top of your coin, like so. Then, I shuffle them, like so. Now, you guess which cup hides your coin. If you get it right, you win another coin. Three in a row, and you win a prize. Gotta be this one. Looks like you've got the wrong cup. It happens. A one in three chance, you know. But with coin in your pocket, you can always try again. I got a whole handful of these Arcadian iron coins. I'll try one more. Keep your eyes on the cup. Now, you guess which cup hides your coin. If you get it right, you win another coin. Three in a row, and you win a prize. It's a magnetized screwdriver. Nothing happened. Hey, that cup moved. It's this one, for sure. Uh... That's... that's correct, but... that's... You used magic, didn't you? You used your magic wand! Nah! Your amulet didn't light up, did it? No, but... but... it's impossible! Because you use magic yourself? Because nobody's supposed to ever win your game? They have a name for people like you, sir. Con artist. What? I'm outraged! I'm... I'm... Outraged! Whatever! I want my prize! Prize? You don't get a prize for winning once! Especially when you're cheating, you cheat! You want me to call the city guard? I demand a prize! Oh, by the gods of gambling! Here, take this and leave me be! A calculator? Where did you get this? Oh, I don't know. Wanted off some guy who got it from someone else who's supposedly been in stock. It's a worth... I mean, it's a valuable souvenir from the mysterious and elusive world of logic. Now, would you please let me be? Let someone else play. Yes? Bird. I'm not talking to you, you cheat! I'll make a trade with you. My screwed... My magic wand for one of your prizes, and then I'll leave your game alone. What's the catch? No catch. You get a screw... Magic wand, and I get one of your... Exotic prizes. Hmm. All right. Fair enough. Which prize would you like? It's an important choice, so I'll think about it before I decide. Very well. But honor our agreement. And for the love of the balance, don't sell that magic wand to anyone but me.
It's a stone dragon gazing down into the center of the dome like it's guarding the entrance. It's a magnificent piece of work. one of the Sentinel Minster. Oh. oh, goodness me, I didn't hear you come in. By the way, you haven't seen Volume 6 of the complete annotated history of the Northlands, have you? I, I could have sworn it was here yesterday. Sorry, no. I guess someone else must have taken it. <clears throat> I try to tell them to write down what they borrow on the list, but they never listen. Only last week I spent three hours searching the entire enclave for the second scripture of the ballads, the scripture of song, before I realized that Vestrum Tobias was studying it back in the city. Now, such incidents could be avoided if only, and uh, this applies to you too, young lady, People would sign out the books they borrow when they borrow them, and sign them back in when they're done. Such a simple procedure. It shouldn't take more than a few seconds to jot down your name and the name of the book you borrow. It makes my job so much easier. Uh, now, which book did you want me to find for you? Are you Minstrom Yaren? Yes, of course. What a silly question. How would I know? I don't know you. I am Minstrom Yerin, keeper of the great library of Mercuria. In fact, this is the greatest library of all the Northlands. Perhaps of the entire world. Although they say the Dark People have a library as big, if not bigger, than this one. But, of course, we're not allowed anywhere near there. Have you been there? I don't think... What a silly question. Of course you haven't. You're not of the Dark People, are you? You don't look like any Dark People I've ever seen, so I can't see how you could possibly... Now, where did Volume 6 disappear to? Hmm? Tobias said I should talk with you. Tobias? Uh... Vestrum Tobias? I haven't seen him for... Well, he was in last week, but before that it must have been... Uh, days, at least. How is he? Is still eating enough for two mules? I must tell you of this funny story I heard the other day. Of how Vestrum Tobias eats enough for a table full of Minstrum. Uh, or was it one Elguan? Although the Elguan don't, as a rule, eat very much at all. Did you know that the Elguan can smell water more than half a day's journey away? Amazing, amazing creatures, perfectly suited for a life in the desert. The balance provides, uh, that's for certain. The balance provides. Vestrum Tobias recommended that I look at some books. Uh, books is what we do best here at the Enclave, that is for certain. Which book would you like to see? I'm looking for a story called The Silver Spear of Goriman. Yes, a fanciful tale if I ever saw one, but a charming one. Did you know that I'm often paid visit by adventurers wishing to read everything available on the spear, so that they too can set out on their foolish quests? Yeah, don't you just hate those adventurers? Well, they pay for my bread, milk and butter with their contributions to the coffers, so I shouldn't be too critical of them. Uh, but they care not about the books, they care only about what the books can give them. I care. About the books, really? I can tell. So, the Silver Spear of Goriman, then?
I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. Are you done? Uh, let me take that back for you. Goodness, it's you again. Oh, you gave me such a fright. Could I see some more books? Oh, certainly. What a silly question. I'm looking for some information, but I'm not sure which book to ask for. No matter. I know a great deal about most of the books in here. What topic intrigues you? I've heard rumors about mermen who live beneath the Sea of Songs, and I'd like to find out more about them. Mermen in the Sea of Songs? Hmm. Uh, let me see what I can find, yes?
I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. Let me take that back for you. It's you again. Oh, you gave me such a fright. Could I see some more books? Oh, certainly. What a silly question. I'm looking for some information, but I'm not sure which book to ask for. No matter. I know a great deal about most of the books in here. What topic intrigues you? Are there any books about flying people who observe and tell stories? Winged storytellers, hmm? Uh, let me see what I can find. Hold on. I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. The island of Elias, near the Briston Atoll. Maybe I should try to go there. Are you done? Let me take that back for you. Some more oh, me. I'm looking for some no information. I need to find out which four magical people of Arcadia were given a piece of the stone disc that serves as the key to the Guardian's realm. The stone disc of the balance, yes? Yes, yes. There, there could possibly be something on that in... Uh, um, uh, let me check. Just one moment. I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. Let me take that back for you. Oh! Oh, goodness. 
Could I see some marble? Me? I'm looking for no some. Matter. I'd like to learn more about dragons, about the drag kin. Oh, yes, yes. We have some wonderful books on that topic. Stay here. I did find something of interest. I'll leave it here for you to read. Are you done? Let me take that back for you. The Emerald Sea. Hello. Uh -huh. Do you know the island of Elias? The vacation paradise of the ancient Delmari? Certainly. How do I get there? It's near the Briston Atoll, but boats rarely travel directly to Briston from Marcuria. You'd have to travel via Guienne. Can you give me a lift to Guienne on your ship? There are three problems with that scenario. Number one. There's no wind, so we can't set sail south. Number two, I lost my navigator a few weeks past, and I have yet to find his replacement. And number three, you're a woman. We don't let women on board the White Dragon. Isn't that a bit sexist? Sexy is just what I worry about. What with a boat full of men being out at sea for months at a time? Not sexy. Sexist. I'm a sailor, girl. What do you expect? Good bedside manners? Did you ever hear of the Merman of the Sea of Songs? You mean the bloodthirsty cannibal Merman of the Sea of Songs? That's it. Never heard of him. Are you sure you've never heard of the Merman of the Sea of Songs? Be quiet. Shh. Not so loud. What's up with the shushing? Legend says that if you speak openly of the bloodthirsty cannibal mermen of the Sea of Songs, they will hunt you down until they've caught you and devoured you. And you believe this legend? No, I'm just trying to scare you off. I'd really appreciate it if I could hitch a ride with you to Guyen. Ain't gonna happen. Sorry. Bye. Hello again, old man. Eh? Eh? It be you. Do you know the island of Elias? Aye. I be knowing lots and lots about the feared isle of Elias. It's feared? How? Because... because... It be a place of cannibals. You really don't know anything about the island of Elias, do you? Uh, no, I do not. Do you know how I can get passage on a boat going south? 
Aye, coin be the way, as me beloved wife always be saying. Course she'd be running off with a wealthy merchant while I be away at sea. Women, never trusted one I didn't pay for again. I don't have much coin at all. Then I be at a loss, as do ye, unless... I need coin to travel in a boat unless... what? Unless I be calling in a favor with the good Captain Horatio Nebeve, who be traveling to Gayen as soon as the wind be picking up. What kind of favor? Oh, he be owing me from back when I was his captain. Would you cash in your favor with Nebeve if I got your bird... bird back? Aye, I be promising anything to get me friend back. It be a deal. See you later. If I not be dead, I... I'm not talking to you, you cheat! You still interested in a trade? My scri- Magic wand for one of your exotic prizes. Which prize would you like to trade for? The talking bird. <laughs> that scraggly heap of- A fantastic choice, young lady! Hold on a second, and I'll get him for you. A fantastic choice, and I really, really mean that. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Wait a second. Did the old man send you to get me? I guess he did. My name's April. Oh, God. Is there no escape? I mean, not that I like being cooped up in a cage for gamblers to gawk at and children to spit at all day, but give me a break. It's better than being locked away in a stinking chest. Thanks a whole bunch for rescuing me, April. You're welcome. No, 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 hey, hey, that's not what I meant. I was being sarcastic. Do you know what sarcastic means? Speak all tongue? Yes, yes, hmm? No, actually, I don't. I speak English. English? English? I don't know where you're from, lady, but you're weird. Okay, so let me go already, all right? Enough with the I'm human so I can boss the bird around shtick. We're all impressed. Sorry, I promised the old man I'd win you back. I need a favor from him badly. Yeah? So what's so important you'd sacrifice a bird's happiness and well-being? The fate of two worlds, billions of people, and the balance. Yeah? Yeah? So... No, forget it. So were you always just Bird? Or did you have a better name? No. It's always been Bird. My full name is that damn Bird. I learned that when I was two weeks old. That damn bird, the old man would say. No good ball of feathers. Then he beat me with a stick. Really? Uh, no. He'd just stick me in the chest and forget about me. Which is almost as bad as beating, believe you me. I'm sorry to hear that, bird. You know, if you were my bird, I think I'd call you Crow. Yeah, well, I'm my own bird, lady, and I don't... Crow. You'd call me Crow? That's a pretty good name. It's a proper name, at least, not just an insult. Anyway, I guess I'd better get you back to your master bird. He's pining for you. 
All he's pining for is coin to gamble with. It's really none of my business. Sorry. <laughs> sure you are. Here's your bird. Bird, sir. It wasn't easy, but I got him back. I sure hope you're grateful. Bird, blessed be the balance, me faithful friend and companion be back. No, 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 not back in the chest, not in the chest! How can you help me get passage on a ship? Aye, I, I be a man of me word. Speak ye with Captain Horatio Nebeve of the White Dragon, the ship behind yous. Tell him Umbrianos be sending yous to cash in on that old favor he be owing me. Thanks, old man. Aye. -er. Hello. Uh huh. You know old Umbrianos, don't you? The old drunk? Aye. He be a good captain once. But ever since he lost his ship, he hasn't been much worth to anyone. Be that as it may, you do owe him a favor, right? Aye, that I do. He saved my life more than once. And I wouldn't be captain of this beautiful lady if it weren't for him. Guess what? I'm here to cash in on that favor. I'll be damned. What did you do for the old geezer? Promise him your hand in marriage? Don't you mind that, old boy. Just get ready to sail south. You're giving me a lift to the island of Elias. I mean, since you're already heading for Gien. I am? That could prove a little tricky. How come? For one, there is no wind. That accursed alchemist up north has put some kind of spell on the wind. Clax, I believe his name is. Roper Clax. Lives in a bloody rock somewhere beyond Riverwood. As long as he's got his dirty claws on the wind, this vessel ain't going nowhere. Then there's a little problem with my crew. I can't very well leave the harbor without a navigator. And my last one decided he didn't much care for the sea anymore and went off to marry a serving maid. But, okay, let's say I manage to free the wind and find you a new navigator. Then will you drop me off on Elias? Ha! <laughs> you think you will be able to defeat Clax, free the wind, and find me a new navigator? By Jaws pus filled left eye, if you do such a trick, then I, I'll take you wherever you wish to go. Most likely they'll be holding your funeral within the week, girl. <laughs> Just leave the madman be and let the army deal with him. Never you mind. As long as you keep your promise and take me to Elias. What's with Elias, anyhow? It's been deserted for hundreds of years. Ever since the Dolmari fell victim to the Great Plague. I need to visit the Elation people to listen to some of their stories. As if there aren't enough stories here. <laughs> it takes all sorts, that be for sure. small barn. It's some kind of cattle, but not the kind of cattle they breed in Kansas. Those monuments, 
They're enormous, like man-made mountains. I wonder what they are, what they were made for. It's a discarded wagon wheel. Do you always travel like you got a two-headed Vesperian nymphate on your tail? I couldn't keep up half the time. Crow, is that you? Of course, there was that pair of stunning robin redbreasts. Twins, did you know? It's not as if I could just leave them without a kiss or two. Or twelve, as it turned out. Eh... <sighs> Maybe I'm just out of shape after being stuck in boxes and cages and knapsacks for the past 20 years. I guess it is you. Of course it's me! How many birds do you know with both good looks and a sense of humor? You got a sense of humor? No, oh, funny. Nah, <laughs> that's funny. What are you doing here, Crow? What am I doing here? What am I doing here? How about a nice to see you, Crow, or I've missed you so much, Crow, or at least a glad to see you out of that chest, Crow. It is nice to see you, Crow. How did you escape? Cunning, milady. Of course, that keg of Andrigan stone liquor the old geezer got his hands on didn't hurt. I've never seen such a shameful display of public drunkenness in my life. Well, not since the last time I had a thimble full of wine. Yeah, boy, were those ladies in for a surprise. When they were told I could talk, I'm sure they didn't count on my encyclopedic knowledge of Dolmari obscenities. The old man was gonna gamble me away again, you know. Went straight back to the cup's handler after the, um, celebration. So, I decided to split before they put me back in the cage. That place was like a prison without the amenities. And let's not even mention the food. Did you ever try roasted El Guan Dung? Ugh, pooey, duh, don't, ever. So, I pecked a button here and some soft tissue there and fled. I had nowhere else to fly, so I decided to join you on your, uh, quest. It sounded like a spot of good old-fashioned fun. Like a bird's own adventure. It's not as if I came after you because I like you, though. You don't have any feathers. Thank God for that. Okay, if you want to join me, I wouldn't mind some company. I'm guessing you'll be using your wings, though, and not your feet? The ground's no place for a free spirit like myself, baby. Besides, I hear there are a lot of good-looking birds in this forest. And let me tell you, they don't parade about on the ground like winged chickens. Just try to slow down once in a while. Let me catch up. Sure. But how do I get your attention if I need to talk to you? Can you whistle? Like this? Sorry, but wait a second. I got a little flute. I could use it to call you. I'm not a sheepdog. Let's get that straight. You play your tune, and I'll consider your request. I won't be flapping to attention like a tame soldier hawk. Deal. We better get moving, though. It's getting late. Aye, aye, Captain. I'll try to keep an eye out ahead in case there's trouble. Oh dear, oh dear me. 
Please, human, don't kill me and skin me. I haven't even sung to the soil yet. Don't worry, I'm not going to kill you or skin you. Oh my, that is good news. Very good indeed. Who are you? My name's April. What's yours? In my language, it's Bandu Umana Banta Aurubana Bitana Benort. It means the little one who tries hard to live up to his father who sings to the soil. That's a mouthful. So, um, what do I call you? You can call me Ben Bandu, the sad little one. Banda is the name of my people. We are the little ones. Why are you sad, Ben Bandu? I'm looking for my brother. He's been gone in the forest for many days, and I've not heard him sing to us. Our people don't walk about the forest much. It's too dangerous for us. You haven't seen my brother, have you? He's short, about my height, with a tan coat and a mischievous glint in his eye. You're the first mole. The first Banda I've met. Oh dear. I hope he's all right. A lot of our people have disappeared this summer. What happened to the Banda that disappeared? We don't really know. But there's something evil in this forest. Something that doesn't like the Banda. I shouldn't be out here looking, but I must find my brother. If I see him, I'll let him know you're looking for him. Oh, thank you. Thank you ever so much. Aren't your people called the Mole People? That's what the city dwellers and farmers call us. They say it with sharp tongue. Moles. Dirt diggers. They don't like us very much. Our given name is Banda. The Little Ones. Or the Banda Banta. The Little Ones who sing to the soil. How do you sing to the soil? When we're old enough, and we found our voices, we just sing, and the earth shapes itself to our needs. We live in harmony with the earth, just like the birds do with the air. Good luck on your search, Ben Bandu, sad little one. And the best of luck to you, April. Please, if you see my brother, tell him to come home. We're all so very worried. Hey, Crow, would you mind doing me a favor? I was having this tete-a-tete -tete with a pretty young sparrow, but hey, Crow at your service. Did you say favor? Oh, sure thing, unless it's something extremely... Uh, no, no, make that even remotely dangerous. I don't like dangerous. Not at all. Just scout out the forest from your vantage point. See if you can find Ben Bandu's brother. Ben who? The mole I just met. I thought you were supposed to be watching me. Didn't you pay attention? No. Uh, mole, you said. They're savages, a lot of them. You eat birds, even. Crow, I eat birds. You probably do, too. Hmm, yeah, I love a roasted duckling and a tangy orange. Oh, uh, well, yeah, 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 I see your point. Looking for a lost mole, then, are we? Yeah, and they're called the Banda. I never got into that whole PC thing. It's not Tyrox, it's the tyrant. Don't say chicks say birds. Don't say birds say women. I don't know. It's all a little too complicated for a simple man of the air like myself. Just go look for the lost mo- the lost Bandu, okay? Yes, ma'am. The bridge is out! Damn! The bridge has been completely destroyed. The edges are charred. Whatever caused this, it couldn't have been flood water or simple wear and tear. I'll have to find some other way across. This gorge is too deep to cross and the river too fierce. The road continues on the other side. I really need to cross this gorge. It's a woman, I guess. An old woman, and it looks like she's in pain. 
Oh, please, pretty lady, pretty, please help me. I've fallen and I can't stand up. What happened to you? Oh, I was out picking bones, uh, berries, berries for my stew and flowers. Yes, pretty flowers. Then I tripped over a big old root and twisted my ankle. It hurts so. Please help me home, pretty lady, please. Where do you live? I live not far from here, not far at all. No, help me home and I'll cook you a fine stew, I promise. Yes, I promise. Just help me home and I'll reward you for your compassion. Yes, you'll have your reward. Who are you? Oh, I'm nobody, nobody at all. Just a frail old woman picking bones. Berries, picking berries for her stew so she can feed her prisoner. Guests, feed her guests and fatten them up for the long winter. Why do you keep swallowing your words? Oh, because I'm just a frail, old, forgetful woman, yes. All right, I'll help you home. Oh, yes. Thanks, plump little Trish. A nice, pretty girl, thanks. I still need your help, Plumpud, a pretty girl. I can't walk all the way home by myself, you see. Help me home and I'll cook you. A good, thick, creamy stew. Yum, I'm getting hungry myself. Let's go. Lead the way, ma'am. Yes, let's go. Come on, just... Follow me, my sweet treat. The old woman seems capable of walking on her own, strangely enough. Maybe she just needed some, uh, encouragement. Looks like a cozy little burrow, like a hobbit hole. They don't look like the edible sort. In fact, these mushrooms look cancerous and ugly. They look cancerous and I'd rather not touch them. Come in, come in, honored guest. I'll just check on my stuffing. On my stew, yes. My thick, delicious stew. Oh dear, what have we here? This stew isn't good enough to stuff. To serve a guest as plump. As well-built and delicious, as honored as you, my dear. Why don't you just wait here and I will go pick some more berries and spices for my stuff. My stew. But wait, what about your bad back? What a strange... I mean, what a strange woman. There's something not quite right about this place. Like those skulls, for one. They look disturbingly humanoid. That pillar looks a little shaky. What's that sound? Where's it coming from? It's kind of shaky, and I don't want to risk bringing the roof down on top of me. It's a wooden table with a tablecloth made of some kind of animal skin. The door's locked from the outside. Wait a second. The door's locked? 
Oh my god, the door is locked! I'm trapped! That's a large fireplace, and a fierce fire. Something's cooking all right. I just can't put my finger on what exactly. It's a loose floorboard. It's a window, but it's too small for me to squeeze through. What are those things? They look like... Is that blood? What does this creature do to people? Grotesque decor. It's a small humanoid skull, like that of a... a child. Good God! Looks like a solid piece of furniture. It's got a chain tied around it. There's that strange knocking sound again. It's locked solid. What was that? It sounds like somebody's trapped inside the cabinet. It's a broom. By the looks of this place, I don't think it's been used much. It's too big for me to carry around. But maybe I could use it somewhere in this room. Dear me. Who are you? Are you going to eat me? I'm April, and I've come to rescue you. Oh my, did my tribe send you? So to speak, I met your brother, Ben Bandu. Ben Bandu? Bandu Umanu Banta Orobana Biutan Dinoart? I think so. He said to call him Ben Bandu. Because he was sad for me? He will be so glad to find that you've rescued me then. Um, yeah. There could be a tiny little problem with that. The Gribbler captured you too? I guess she... it... whatever the Gribbler is did capture me. That took me by surprise since I did come here willingly. That's how she works, the Gribbler. She tricks Banda and humans to come here to her house, and then she cooks them and eats them. Friendly old lady, she's not. What's your name? Bandu Utamatuta Uyatan Ayama Binaort. That's a little difficult for me to remember. How about I call you Bandu Uta? Oh my, yes, yes, that would be fine. We have long names, us Banda, as long as our tunnels. You can tell me more about your people later. Right now we need to find a way out of here. It's Ben Bandu's brother, Bandu Uta. Come over here. Let's try something. Oh dear. Oh dear me! What are you going to do? I'm going to get you out of here. Hold on. Can you break the window and get through? Oh dear, I'm so sorry, but it doesn't seem like I can do that. The window is too thick for me to break. Come over here. Let's try something. Oh dear, oh dear me! What are you going to do? I'm going to get you out of here. Hold on. Hey, wait a second. I need you to open the door for me. Don't run off. Damn. What the hell am I going to do now? I am back with the berries and... What's happened here? Why is the... Human. I... I just saved an innocent person from being your dinner, Gribbler, so there! So, you 
think you could come into my house and sell my dinner free and get away with it? Uh, well, I will get away with it because soon a lot of people, armed people, will come to get me and to kill you. So you'd better, you'd better run away while you still have a chance. I guess you will be my dinner tonight then. And I had hoped to save you for tomorrow. Oh, come on, Gribbler. You can't honestly think you can eat. Step aside. I know karate. Beat it. Get out of here. Oh, shit. Whatever that is, it's definitely not a fragile old lady anymore. Hi, Ben. Oh dear, oh dear. Where's the monster? She vanished like smoke up a chimney. Do you know what happened to your brother? He just ran off, didn't even stop to say goodbye. I, I met him back on the road. He was running like the wind. Said that when you helped him out of the window, he spotted the Gribbler returning, so he went to get help. I told him to alert the village, gather as many of the Banda as possible, and come back here. And that I'd try my best to aid you in the meanwhile. Thank you. That was very brave of you. Brave of me? Oh my. You defeated the Gribbler. You are a hero. I owe the life of my brother to you. The life of everyone in our tribe. I know my fellow Banda will want to reward you for your gracious deeds. You are invited to our village with me and I will tell my people to prepare a grand feast for you. You don't have to do that, Ben. I just did what anybody would have done. But you did it. Give me your map and I will show you where our village is then I must run ahead to tell the Banda that the Gribbler is no more! We got a nice bonfire though. April! I'm so glad you could come to our village and sit by our fire so we can thank you in the proper manner. It's my privilege, Ben Bandu. I wouldn't want to pass through this forest without visiting your village and seeing for myself how the Banda people live. Oh my. You speak so eloquently. My brother sits by the fire. I know he wishes to speak with you. But the Elder would speak with you first. He rests in his hammock up on the mound. Go speak with him, and then come down again, so we can celebrate the death of the Gribbler and the brave escape of April Ryan and Ben Bandu's brother. It's Ben Bandu's brother, Bandu Uta. It's the Elder Bandu. It's Crow! When did he get here? I should speak with the Elder first. I don't want to seem dis... Glowing. The hero of the day comes to visit the old Bandu. Let me see your face, human. Make yourself shorter. That's much better. The human is closer to the soil now, and she may even feel it like we do. Moving, shaping itself, breathing, beating. I don't feel anything. Sorry. So the human is not a digger, but we don't judge her because of that. The human is a hero, she is. Don't call me that. I'm not a hero. I was just in the right place at the right time to help somebody out. She destroyed the evil that haunted our forest, and rescued one of our little ones from the creatures of chaos. And so she is a hero. She's the one spoken of in our songs, is she not? The one who will deliver us from an evil presence, and who will go on to save the balance. You are she, are you not? I don't know. Well, we will see, we will see. You will sleep in our spirit dig tonight, and then tomorrow, we will see. But now, you must enjoy yourself. 
This feast is in your honor to show our appreciation for your courage. Thank you. Go, eat, and drink, and dance, and then go to sleep in the spirit dig. We will talk tomorrow before you continue your journey. You are on a journey, are you not? A very long one, yeah. We are all on a journey, but yours is the most important one ever. So go. I will smoke my pipe and think on prophecies and songs. Go. Crow? Oh, hey, uh, I was uh, wondering what happened to you. What happened to you? I thought you were supposed to help out in the search. I could have used some assistance this afternoon. Uh, yeah, but I did find some mal... Some banda, didn't I? Just not the one we were looking for is all. And besides, I was beef. My wings can only carry me so far before I need a twig to rest on and a couple of juicy berries. Speaking of berries, did you taste the ones they got here? The word is yum, big yum. I don't know what they soaked them in, but hoo-hoo, man! Well, at least you're okay. No, sure, you know me. I could use a good flea plucking, though. Care to reward me for my diligence? Diligence? Ha! <sighs> I'm guessing I'll be plucking my own fleas tonight, then, and, and I'm okay with that. I'm blaming you if I wake up with a crick in the neck tomorrow, though. It's a hammock built for a bonder. Oh dear, it's April. Sit, sit down. Are you feeling all right? I thought you disappeared on me back at the Gribbler's lair. Oh dear, I do apologize. I saw the Gribbler return from the forest, so I ran into the bushes and headed straight for the village. I was going to get help, you understand, but then I bumped into my brother and I told him what was happening. Well, I'm glad you're okay. Thanks to you, April. How did you kill the Gribbler? Lots of luck and a little bit of quick thinking. My limited talents in the martial arts were woefully underused. Were you frightened? I don't think I've ever been so frightened in my entire life. Kind of exhilarating, actually. Although at this point, I think I've had quite enough excitement for a lifetime. Oh, dear me. I could never be as brave as you, April. Ever. What is the spirit dig the Elder told me about? Oh, it's a sacred place. A very sacred place. It's where we, the Banda, can speak with our ancestors, ask them questions, and learn from their wisdom. Yeah, well, the Elder said I was to sleep there tonight. He did? The Elder said that? Then you have been honored by him, April. Only those worthy of the spirits of our ancestors can spend the night in the spirit dig. Where is the spirit dig? Right behind you, at the far end of our green. Enjoy the party, guys. Oh, but it's in your honor, April. You must enjoy it yourself, too. There are tunnels extending down into the earth behind the screen. It's not a big fire, but it's comfortably warm in here, and the smoke has a very pleasant, very mellow texture to it. Mushrooms? Or chairs? Or both? It's some kind of bed made with twigs and moss. Not as comfortable as a real mattress, I'm sure, but it'll do. I'll just lie down for a few. No, screw that. I'm getting a good night's sleep. That's what I'm doing. I've never been this tired in my life. What? 
the hell do you think you're doing? Wh what? What are you doing here, you arrogant bitch? You don't think you can really save the world, do you? Who are you? I don't tell me you don't recognize me, April Ryan. I'm you. That's impossible. This is just another dream. I must be dreaming. Think again, loser. This is as real as it gets. Why are you here? I'm sending you home, that's what. You're a sad little twit. Don't you realize that? There's no point subjecting the entire world. Hit two worlds to your feeble attempts at redeeming yourself, is there? Go away! Leave me alone! How the hell am I supposed to do that, Einstein? I am you. You are me. Unfortunately for the both of us, we're inseparable. I don't need this Freudian id crap. Not now. There's so much I have to do, so many people I have to help. Oh yeah? Like you really believe that? Like you give a shit about those people? You're doing this for yourself, April, and that's why you're gonna fail. Shut up! Shut up! That's always your way out, isn't it? Telling people to shut up when they speak the truth and shutting them out when they're getting too close for comfort. Hey, don't tell me. I do it because Daddy hurt me. Screw that. How do you think you're gonna hold up when this job gets tough if you can't rely on anybody or believe in anything? I'm doing it, aren't I? Yeah, because what kind of choice did you have? Face your problems back home? Face the nightmares? I don't think so. So you run. And you think you're putting distance between yourself and your fear of the past and the present? All you're doing is running straight into an inevitable nervous breakdown. I'm right now. You're talking to yourself, April. Now that's not something a mentally stable person would do, is it? Shut up! Shut up! Shh. It's okay, April. It's okay. Charlie? Charlie, is that you? Shh. Don't you worry. I'm here. I'll take good care of you. Oh, God, Charlie, I'm so glad that... that you're... you're... You're not here. You can't be. I'm still dreaming. No, no, you're not dreaming. I'm here, but in spirit only. Is it? Is it really you, Charlie? We are Charlie, your friend. We feel his heart and his mind. And his sleeping spirit joins us. But we speak from the great digs of the beyond, where the songs of the panda never end. Are the dead? We have passed into the soil. We are spirits. And we have come to guide you. Why Charlie? Why do you show me Charlie? He loves you. And so he guides us here. Into your heart and mind. He loves me? Charlie loves me? You are not alone in the world, April. There are many who care for you. Your friends and your family. Your real family. You are not alone in your journey through life. What do you know about my family? My real family? They watch out for you, April. That's all we know. They have never abandoned you. They have just let you live the life you needed to live. To understand. It's important that you understand. Understand what? That life, even when difficult and painful, is a gift. That love is priceless, and rare, and precious. That every good action, every good thought counts. And that a single person can make a difference, can change the world. If she puts her mind to it, if she believes in herself, and the people who believe in her. But everything is so frightening. I don't understand half of what goes on around me. Did not the mother say she would help you? Watch out for you? Did not Charlie and Emma, your friends, offer to give you a helping hand when you didn't even tell them the truth about what was going on? And Cortez the Red, did he not prove himself a friend as well? 
how then can you be so afraid when you have so many spirits to be with you in your darkest hour? Cortez the Red? Please, tell me what I have to do. I'm just fumbling in the dark here. Follow your heart and your spirit, April. And use your mind. These are your weapons. And with them, you will defeat chaos. When you wake, tell the Elder that you've had a Bakbar. That you've spoken with the band of spirits. And that your name amongst our people is now April Bandu and Bata. April Digger who will seek and find. Oh, don't go. Please don't go. She's awake! April! Good morning, Ben Bondu. Greetings of the new day to you, April. Did you sleep well in the spirit dig? Did I sleep well? Aside from the voices, the apparitions, the sharp rocks poking me in the back, and the moist moss mattress? No, not really. So you were visited by the spirits? I guess. When you told me last night that I would be, I didn't believe you. I thought it was just a manner of speaking, like saying, don't let the bed bugs bite. Our ancestors are close to us at all times. Once in a while, they speak to those who have been chosen to spend a night in the spirit dig. That they spoke to you is a great honor. April, a great honor. Right now, I'd be happy to exchange all the honor in the world for one decent night's sleep. <laughs> Oh dear me, you are very funny, April. If all humans are as funny as you, your cities must be filled with laughter. The Elder wishes to speak with you again. And I must sing now, down in the tunnels. It was decided this morning that I was finally ready to join the diggers. I'm happy for you, Ben Bondu. Thank you. May the balance provide you on your journey, April. You will be in my heart always. And you will be in mine, Ben Bondu, always. You will come back when your journey is over. I'll try. Goodbye. Oh, my. I cannot stand farewells. But farewell. It's Ben Bondu. Ashes. So, you are awake? Did you sleep well? As well as can be expected, I guess. Does the word Buckbar mean anything to you? Buckbar? Where did you hear this word? The spirits told me that I'd had a Buckbar. So, the spirits spoke to you openly? You are lucky, human. Some who enter the spirit dig never come out again. And some spend the night but hear nothing. But to you, the spirits spoke. A Bakbar is a vision of yourself that speaks the truth in two ways. One is the dark truth. This is how you see yourself when you are not sure of yourself or angry with yourself. The other truth is the very opposite of the first. This is how you must see yourself to be happy. But the spirits remind us that both are important. That you cannot love yourself without first seeing your flaws. The people I saw, were they really there? The spirits use masks to convey their messages. And they speak in voices from the past or the present that carry great weight with you. The messengers are never the same, nor the message. 
but you must take care to hear and heed their words. I was told that my name among the Banda would be April Bandu Mbata. She among the little ones who seeks and finds. So, you are the one we sing of. The human who would come to aid us and to save our world, and who will then tear it apart. You bring tidings both happy and sad to the Banda, April Bandu Mbata, both hope and despair. This world will never be the same again once you have passed through it. But we are grateful, and I'm proud to have met you and to give you what you came for. It was just luck that brought me here. I didn't come for anything in specific. Yes, you did. This is what you came for. What is it? This is the stone given to us by the fathers to keep safe until this day. It has been with us for so long. Oh, it's a piece of the disc. Then you know it. You came for the stone even though you didn't know it until now? I guess I did. Thanks. Now you must continue your journey, April Bandu Mbata. Remember that this is your tribe now. And so you are welcome at our fires and in our digs whenever you come this way again. I'm honored. Thank you. May there always be soil between your toes, April Bandu Mbata. And between yours, Elder. Goodbye. Wake up! Huh? Turn off the big light, Mommy. It's called the sun, Crow. Welcome to the world of the living. Oh. <sighs> I was having this weird dream about a big-ass turkey wearing a pair of red shoes. And you were there. And, and he was there. And, and, and maybe it wasn't a dream after all. I think it's safe to say that you need therapy, and we need to leave right now. We do? We do! Let's go get them! <clears throat> uh, who are we getting again? Some evil alchemist out to rule the world with his powerful and destructive magic. Yes! Exactly! Uh, I'll keep an eye out for other potential threats then, shall I? Like, uh, marauding mice? You do that, Crow. Thank you. It's a piece of the stone disc I got from the Banda people. Swamp water. There are things moving down there. Big things. Mosquitoes everywhere. I hope one of those clouds doesn't get a whiff of me in charge. The last thing I need now is malaria. There's an ordeal I prefer not to go through again. Did I drop something? It feels like I dropped something. Whatever it was, one of those... things probably ate it.